Hi, I'm Shelly Wood, and this is my tiny sewing room where I make doll clothes sewing videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make this candy corn dress which will fit the Creatable World dolls and a number of other dolls that are in the same size range. But before we begin, please go to Shellywood.com to download and print this free PDF sewing pattern. There's a helpful link in the description below this video on YouTube. Use your pattern to cut out all the shapes you see here. The skirt pattern comes in two lengths for a good reason. I use the longer length for the candy corn fabric and you'll notice it says to cut on the fold so it's double the length of the pattern. Okay, so you'll cut it on the fold to get a nice long stretch of fabric. And then the shorter of the two skirt patterns you use to cut out three layers of what's called tulle. And I kept some tulle here so that I could show you what it is in case you're unfamiliar with tulle. It's that fabric that's used for ballerina skirts and it's relatively inexpensive and easy to find at your fabric store. Instead of candy corn fabric, of course, you can use any small print fabric for that portion of the dress. Make a double fold hem along the skirt's length, so that's the longest stretch of fabric. You're going to fold once and then a second time, and then you're going to whip stitch all along this fold. So here I am showing you how to fold it. You fold once, and then you fold a second time, and your pattern should be marked for this fold. There's a link to my whip stitch tutorial below this YouTube video. But here's how I do a whip stitch. So you um, stick your needle through underneath the hem and then all the way through the hem and then you pull it through. The long end of your fabric should now be hemmed all the way across. You can decorate a skirt's hemline many ways, but for my dress, I'm using 3 8 inch satin offray ribbon and a quarter inch rickrack. Measure your ribbon to match the skirt's longest edge. Measure rickrack to match the ribbon's length. I hand stitched my rickrack onto the ribbon, but of course you could use a sewing machine to save time. If you'd like to hand stitch yours, then what I would do is place a tiny stitch on top and on the bottom of each bend in the rickrack. Now when you've sewn the rickrack onto the ribbon, sew the ribbon onto the skirt's fabric, just like you see here. I'd stitch across the top and bottom edges of the ribbon. Set the skirt fabric aside for a moment and let's work on the bodice, the upper body part. We'll start by sewing the bodice darts, which are easily cut for you already on just based on the pattern. Next attach one of the backs to the front along the shoulder, keeping right sides together. I'm using a back stitch for this. Do the same with the other back, attaching it at the shoulder using a back stitch. And if you need help with the back stitch, again, I have a tutorial for that. Now it's time to gather the sleeve at the bottom of the sleeve. This isn't the rounded end of the sleeve called the sleeve cap, but rather you need to gather the straight end of the sleeve down at the bottom where the wrist will be. But before knotting your gathers, compare your gathers to the cuff's length. You want the cuff and the sleeve to match in length. Once they do match, you can tie off your gathers. In these video clips, I'm using a half inch bias tape for my demonstration, but later I switched to a quarter inch bias tape and I liked it better for this size doll. But this is nice for you to be able to see. 
So you take that bias tape and you wrap it around the gathered end of the sleeve. That's why you want them to match in length. And then you start your whip stitch. And it's very important when you're doing this whip stitch to kind of decide which side is the proper side because you want your stitches to be really long on the underside, the wrong side, and shorter on the outer side. Okay, so here's my, sh my um, whip stitch on that side, and here's my whip stitch on this side, and you can see these are the longer stitches. And then I make a shorter stitch on the outside where it's gonna be seen. That's just a little tip for whip stitching to try and hide those seams. Now here's a clip of me sewing the quarter inch bias tape on just in case you wanted to see what the difference is. So again, I'm trying to make sure that my long stitches are on one side and short stitches on the other. And then of course I tie a knot when I come to the end. And there's my short stitch on the outside of my sleeve. Add a cuff to the end of both your sleeves. Now we're going to attach our sleeves to the bodice, stitch from the underarm area toward the shoulder seam, but stop sewing just shy of that shoulder seam and tie your knot in your thread. Do the same thing with the other underarm. So you'll whip that sleeve around to the other underarm and then you'll start stitching from there to just shy of the shoulder seam yet again. And that means there will be a gap at the top, very likely. So you knot your thread just shy of the shoulder seam yet again. On this side, I'm ready to knot my thread. I've stitched it from that underarm to just shy of the shoulder seam. And then there's kind of a gap in between the stitches. Now, if you have any extra fabric around the shoulder in this gap of the sleeve, use a new stitch to gather that fabric. And I'm gonna show you, I'm doing that right here. I'm putting a little gather there to close it off so it fits the shoulder nicely. Now sew the gathered fabric to the shoulder seam. A back stitch will really help keep this seam secure. Here's what your bodice looks like now. So I'm gonna show you in 3D. There we go. And the thing about it, if you use the back stitch to attach your sleeve, is it's a really sturdy stitch. And if you give it a tug like that, it will stay in place. Attach the other sleeve exactly the same way. When you lay the bodice flat, it's gonna look like this with two sleeves now. Fold one sleeve in half as shown in this video clip. So you want your right side up and then you fold so that the wrong side is up, folding the sleeve in half and bringing the bodice back against the bodice front. Now stitch from your cuff to your underarm and from the underarm down to the bottom of the bodice like you see me doing here. Fold and stitch the other sleeve exactly the same way. So here I am folding it so right sides are together. And then I'm gonna stitch from the cuff to the underarm and from the underarm down. Invert the bodice. Now this can be tricky and a chopstick can help, but be very gentle when you get to that cuff. You wanna be gentle so you don't rip out your whip stitches that you put in the cuff. Very gentle. Sometimes it helps to give the chopstick a little twist, but go slowly. Now it's time to go back to working on the skirt. Gather all three tulle petticoats along with your skirt, keeping your gather stitches very small. Make sure your petticoats are on the wrong side of the skirt. Don't knot your gathers until you've had a chance to measure the skirt to the bodice. And the best way to do that is to pin it. Pin the base of the, 
bodice to the skirt to make sure their links match up like you see right here. So I've pinned that skirt to the bodice and notice that I did not gather the sides of the skirt, only the middle section of the skirt. The sides are not gathered. Now once you've knotted your gathers, sew the skirt's gathered waist to the bodice. following that line that you pinned. It's starting to look more like a dress now. Remember how we folded bias tape over the sleeve's raw edge and then whip stitched it to that fabric? We're gonna do the same thing with ribbon at the neckline. We're gonna stitch it around the collar of the dress, folded. At the end of the ribbon, create another fold and whip stitch down this fold, stopping about two centimeters from the waist. So you go all the way down the skirt until you're about two centimeters from the waist. Create this folded or hemmed edge on both sides of your skirt and bring together the skirt's raw edges like you see me doing right here. So it looks like it's done, but it's not quite finished. We have a raw edge right there at the bottom of the skirt. We're gonna bring those two raw edges of fabric together. Stitch from the hem up to create a closed base. You could do from the closure down. I kinda like closure down instead of hem up, especially where we have petticoats. And you can see I've incorporated the petticoats. Now you're gonna invert the whole dress, including the skirt. And that's pretty simple, you won't need a chopstick for it. Right there, it is such a cute dress. Sew a few snaps down the back of the dress, and if you need help sewing snaps on fabric, I have yet another tutorial for that. Look in the description below this video on YouTube for the link. Now you're ready to try the dress on your doll. For more free printable sewing patterns to fit dolls of many shapes and all different sizes, please remember to visit my website, ShellyWood.com, and you'll find I actually have a list of all the dolls that fit in this particular pattern, which is really nice. What if there was an easy way to take a big doll pattern and resize it to fit a little doll, or vice versa? I'm Shelly Wood, the doll clothing designer, and in my pattern alteration class, I'm gonna share with you my resizing formula. Pattern alteration is when you take a pattern that you already own and you make changes to it. Let's say a dress doesn't fit your doll quite right. I'll show you how to create a gusset to extend the dress's bodice. Along the same lines, I'll show you how to use a doll's body measurements to lengthen and shorten shirt sleeves and to recreate the pants patterns you already own so they will fit dolls of different shapes and sizes. Following my instructions, you'll learn how to reshape dresses and skirts, making them fuller or less full depending on the look you're going for. With this collection of more than 40 videos, you'll use my measurement guide and dozens of tips and tricks to create a full wardrobe for the dollar dolls of your choice. I invite you to join me. We are gonna have so much fun.